garden friends and I hope you're enjoying your summer so far wherever you live. I'm Debbie and I'm a master gardener and butterfly raising hobbyist. In today's video I'm going to be continuing the series Raising Monarchs and this video will be the egg to the caterpillar. I'll also show you the supplies that you need in raising a caterpillar and finally I'll show you what I do on a daily basis raising monarchs. Make sure you stay till the end where I share a quote about butterflies. Also, it's giveaway time, so make sure you stay to the end to get those details. Before we get started, I wanted to address the recent news about the migrating monarchs being on the red list or endangered list. International Union for Conservation of Nature, which is the world's most comprehensive scientific authority on the status of species. They arrived at this decision after decades of falling population driven by losses in the plants they need as caterpillars and the forests where they spend in the winter combined with climate change. The numbers of western monarchs which live west of the Rocky Mountains plummeted by an estimate of 99.9% .9 between the 1980s and 2021. They have rebounded somewhat this year, but they are still in peril. Eastern monarchs, which makes up most of the population in North America, dropped by 84% from 1996 to 2014. In 2020, monarchs were threatened with extinction, but declined to add them to the endangered species list because of other species that took priority. I'll talk about other factors in future videos. So what can we do? Besides planting milkweed, we need to plant nectar sources so that they have fuel on the journey north and also, more importantly, their journey south, which they need to fuel up on their journey south to Mexico. I've been raising monarchs for about seven years, and although I won't be raising them forever, I wanted to first make my garden hospitable for all creatures so that I would have a garden that was full of native plants for the pollinators. But today I'm going to be talking mainly about the monarch, the stage from egg to caterpillar. There are four stages of the monarch, the egg, the larva or caterpillar, the pupa or chrysalis, and then the adult butterfly. The female lays between 100 and 300 eggs during her lifetime. The eggs are a pale yellow oval shape. The eggs hatch approximately four days after they are laid. When the larvae first hatch, they are about one centimeter and they grow to about five centimeters. The tiny caterpillar eats its way out of its shell and then turns and eats the rest of the shell. It will feed on milkweed, which is the only food for monarchs for approximately two weeks. The caterpillar will grow approximately 2,000 times its original size. Each stage of growth between molts is called an instar and the monarch has five of them. When it molts, it will stop feeding and will start the process of shedding its skin. Caterpillar will lose its old head first and then a newer, lighter color will appear. Here's a video of a caterpillar shedding its skin.
Now I'll show you the supplies that you need in raising monarchs. Supplies that you're going to need to get started with raising monarchs. We have our plastic that um, I put them in from um, egg to about in star three, I would say it is. And then I also have a magnifier. That's just so I can see when they're very tiny or the egg, I use a magnifier and I'll put the links in the description box below. So it's a magnifier. And then I also have this digital microscope that I bought. Um, and I use this when they are eggs and coming out. Um, I like to take pictures and videos when they're coming out of the egg. So I'll leave that in the link below. I also have toothpicks. Sometimes I have to move them slightly, so I use a toothpick. I also have a little uh, dustpan and a little tiny paintbrush to clean up the frass or caterpillar poop. And I'll show you how I do that in a minute. I also have, this is in the morning when I go to cut milkweed, I have clippers and I clean these. I have, if you can't find these floral stands, which I use, I also use these. It's just foam that you can stick these in. But I, I use these. And what else do we need? Oh, well, this is the actual uh, tubes. I also have a little vacuum and I'll show you how I use this and I make sure I account for all the caterpillars and then clean up the frass with this. What I do is I have a little leftover uh, container and I um, get the milkweed in the morning and at night and then I put a paper wet paper towel, not soggy, and I keep it fresh in the refrigerator and then just mark it that it's milkweed so nobody goes and thinks it's something to eat. But this keeps them fresh and I've not had a problem with them. Of course, you can't keep in th these forever. I would say about five days. So um, that's what we're going to do first. Um, this one in particular, I have a few in these plastic containers and these are from Egg until Instar 3. And so this one I had found in the uh, yard. So I'm keeping this separate to make sure that it doesn't have anything going on. I did have another one and I kept it separate and it's a good thing. I just uh, noticed this morning it was deflated. So something was wrong with it. Again, this was outside. So far this one looks good, but it was about an Instar 2, 3 and it looks like it just didn't complete the molting. And that happens sometimes. So um, this one as well was brought in from the outside. So I'll clean this first. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the leaves and I'm going to discard this one since it's already chewed, chewed. And this is a caterpillar that's probably a stage, I would say, two. And so what I do, I'm just going to put him down right there. This is the frass on the paper towel, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I have a plastic bag. So at night, I put two paper towels. So that's the one that I just threw away. And in the morning, I get rid of the first layer. And then um, at night, I get rid of all of these. So what I do, I'll just show you at night kind of what I do. I just have paper towels. I forgot to tell you that I do. That's one of your supplies and a mister. So what I do is I cut it in half and then what I do is I just split it like that, fold it, put it on the top 
missed it a little bit. And then I'm going to put a fresh leaf in. I'm going to try to find a smaller one. Um, so here's a fresh leaf and I'll put that on the bottom and the one that he or she currently is on, I try not to move them. And the big thing I'm, I found out the hard way by learning as well is when they're not eating, they may be molting and you just don't want to interrupt that process. So just leave them be, try to take them off the piece that they're on. You can always get rid of the piece later. So that's all I do is I just put that back on top. That's that, all the oxygen it needs for right now. I'm going to go to the next one. This little guy looks about the same size. And I'm going to get rid of this top layer. And um, I will put in that paper towel. I'll just like I said, sometimes this just saves me some time, and tonight then I'll just have to take off this top layer because they do poop a lot. So I'm going to put this leaf back in. He has quite a bit of leaf left, so I'm going to just put this back in, and that's it for that one. And raising monarchs it does take time, so it's very time consuming. You have to devote your time. This one I would say would be a two. It's now yellow, but it's still very tiny. And there's all that poop on it. So I'm going to get rid of this layer with the leaf. Try to keep it as clean as possible. And I'll give it a fresh leaf. Let's see if I've got another small one in here. Hmm. Not very small, but we'll just put this one in here. This one will probably be in here at least two, more, two or three more days. So I'll put that back. And you might need to sp spritz it a little bit. You're just trying to keep the leaf just damp, not sopping, because you don't want to have uh, it get mold or anything like that, because that will kill the caterpillar as well. And they like to be underneath, so I just put them back under there. That is the third one. We've got three more to go. Now this guy, here's a great example. This guy, it was at the top. I did not move them and I don't know if you could see that. There's the dead skin of the previous instar. I'll turn it over. I'm going to leave him be. He just molted. So I'm going to leave him alone. He'll go and eat pretty soon. So I'm going to get rid of this leaf. And top layer of that one. Get another paper towel. I'm going to grab my bat. Put it on this side. So what I usually do is keep a plastic bag next to me so I can get rid of the garbage. My dining room table is not a dining room table for the summer. It's my monarch table. And usually this, I usually have at least 24. And I only have, well now we're down to nine. Very unusual this year that not liking what's happening this year. And it's happening everywhere. Everybody is talking about it. So that raises monarchs that they have not seen very many this year. So that's quite sad. All right, so I'm going to get another leaf for this little guy. Eventually, he should get, come down and start eating again. So again, this guy, if you see the skin behind it, he just molted. Or she. Okay, two more of these little guys. All right, this one is about the same size. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. And if it has frass on it, I just brush it off into the garbage. 
there's still quite a lot of this leaf left in the other one, so I'm going to just put it back. Hide them under there. And that one's done. And the last one of these, this one I believe was smaller. Um, this one I might need my magnifying. If you can see that. He's quite little, but he might be a stage just changed to a two. So we're going to keep him on this. There's a little bit of frass in the bottom, so I'm going to just brush that off. And tonight I'll get rid of this layer. He's pretty tiny. When they're little, they don't have quite a lot of frass, but I am going to put a couple of these. Um, the difference, there's a difference between the two. This is a common milkweed and this is swamp. So some of the eggs were on swamp and some were on common. Eventually they all seem to go to the common. So I'm just going to put these, this little swamp in there in case he wants to try a little bit of that. So this right here this is what i uh, put when they go into the next enclosure i take them outside so they can experience the weather conditions light humidity just so that they feel like they're outside and have the same conditions as if they were raised outside so i put them in here and it's a little bit sturdier cage because it has these plastic tubes so i do that um, when they reach the next stage and I'll show you that in the next part. Now we're going to, when they reach, I would say in star three, I put them in here and we have a couple. I will show you, this one is the first one. I'm gonna dump that frass. Um, this is the one that's the oldest. This one is probably I would say it is 11 or 12 days. So in a couple more days, this will be going into its pre-chrysalis and chrysalis, and it will start eating quite a bit. So what I do then, I will show you. I take out all these guys, and you can see that there's a lot of frass here. So I'm going to clean that up real quick. You can use a vacuum or you can use this little dustpan to clean up the frass. And you want to make sure this is picked up. I do this twice a day, morning and at night, and I'm just uh, showing you right now. And then I have paper towels that I line this so that the bottom doesn't get all, I can always throw away the paper towels. So I put these paper towels back in here. And then put these guys back. Don't want any escapees. So the next step, I guess my video shut off. So what I do after I vacuum is I fill up the tubes with more water that you can see that this needs to be filled up. I leave the caterpillar on the existing leaf and then I put a fresh leaf in and fill it up. And you can see this guy is on that leaf and I put a fresh leaf in and I will fill these up. I always try to keep one extra leaf so they can go on to another leaf once they're, once they're done with this one. This is the largest and my very first one of the season. This one will be going in its pre-chrysalis in about two to three days, and then it will be in the chrysalis about 10 to 14 days. So in about two weeks, I will show you that video. And that's the first caterpillar of 20 22 chowing down on its leaf. Next time you see him or her, she will probably be in her chrysalis or maybe even a butterfly. So this next video, 
part three will be in about two weeks. I hope you enjoyed seeing the beautiful transformation of egg to caterpillar. So make sure you hit that like button. It's giveaway time and today I'm going to be giving away this beautiful slate welcome sign that you can put in your garden. It's handmade by a Facebook friend, Ginger, and her Facebook page is Ginger J's Painted Wares and Such. So check her out. To enter, leave a comment or a question in the details below this video. The contest starts Monday, August 1st at 6 p.m and runs through Sunday, August 14th at 11 p.m. The winner will be announced on Monday, August 15th at 6 p.m. Make sure you leave that question or comment in the video below so that you'll be entered to win. And thank you, thank you to all my subscribers. I reached my six month goal of 100 subscribers and I just wanted to say a big thank you. My next goal is a little loftier at 250 in a year. So make sure you share this video with all of your friends who are gardeners or butterfly enthusiasts. In my next video, I'm hoping to go out and see a sunflower field and also visit a flower farm that you can get wildflowers at. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell for that video. Now I'd like to share a beautiful quote about the butterfly. Thanks for watching and happy gardening. Bye-bye.